Hello, everyone. This is Jeff Wilkerson, professor of physics at Luther College. Uh, today, we're talking about using formulas in kaleidograph. We may do a second one of these with some more advanced stuff. This is going to be pretty basic information on using the form formula entry window. I've got a couple of different data windows open in kaleidograph here for you to look at. Uh, if you want to find uh, the data, the formula entry window, uh, you can do so by dragging these windows around, or you can do a control F or you can come up here under windows and find formula entry there and pop it to the front. Uh, there are eight spots where you can store formulas. And if you do save macros at the end, uh, when you quit kaleidograph save equations, you can, you can save what you've stored in there until the next time. Um, pay attention to uh, little things like this, where you are in degrees or radians for angular measure, for example. So, so, so note what that, that looks like. Uh, notice that the formulas are built on a um, this, this C12 column number. And that column number we get up here. You see the column numbers. It doesn't matter what you've titled the column. Uh, Kaleidograph is using this column number. If you don't see the column number, you press that little arrow, that down arrow right there will show you the column numbers uh, to do what you're doing. Uh, then uh, back at the formula entry window, uh, we can do all sorts of things. So if we want to build a formula, so what this is doing is this is saying in column 12, write uh, column 9 minus column 11. We don't have anything in column 11 here right now. So let's actually do column 8 minus column 10. Um, so come here, we can say let's write column 8 minus column 10. And this is a, a then it writes, you know, what, what you had in this row in this column. What we have is we've measured uh, the, the magnitude of this star. This is one of my, one of my actual data uh, files for a variable star. And we've measured the magnitude of this star using a five pixel aperture radius and a four pixel aperture radius. And this is the difference. This is five pixel aperture minus four pixel aperture. So I could come up here and I could say uh, five pix minus four pix. Um, since Magnitude counts backward. Uh, it tells me that it's actually fainter with the five pixel radius than it is with the four pixel radius for these brighter stars that are up in here. These stars um, for, for these, excuse me, for these days, it's just one star uh, for these days up in here. And we can look to see. Uh, we see that that's generally, you know, it, it's, it's true all the way down through there where we have data. Uh, when we run out of five pixel data in here, we stopped using that a while back. Um, you see it stopped writing. So if there's nothing there, it just doesn't do the calculation. If we had it masked out, it doesn't do the calculation. So you see that's the way uh, we've done this these calculations. Interesting to note uh, that the star appears a few percent brighter with a four pixel radius, the way we normalize with a four pixel radius than the way we do with a, a five pixel radius. So uh, anyway, that's what we got going on there. Uh, that was a pretty straightforward formula. Uh, that we have now what i do and this is a great tip for um all of you out there I'm, I'm primarily making this for the physics 182 students at luther college but other people might be interested too uh, what i do is i keep a word processing document open and i just store formulas like this in there so i i can cut and paste a formula instead of having to type in new formulas each time i just go to my word processing document and cut and paste a formula into here. Uh, these magnitudes, uh, the magnitude four, for example, uh, that's the first formula that I have stored in here for all of, I use it so much for all of my uh, light uh, curves for variable stars. You see it says C10 is equal to some constant minus 2.5399. Now the uh, times, to do a times, you have to do a star, an asterisk right there. So that's the symbol that you have for uh, multiplication times the log of C9. So I have C9 is the signal we measured uh, in analog, the digital units uh, for this star on this night. And I take the logarithm of that and I multiply it by a constant and I subtract all of that from some other constant. And that gives me uh, the magnitude that you see out here. Now you could you could say, okay, let's, let's go out here and pop into one of these. 
Um, so, so you do the stuff you normally do. Uh, so you, you see divided by is that uh, slash symbol right there. Uh, there's multiplication again. So here I added four columns together and I divided by 100 and then multiplied by another column is what I did. I have no idea what I was doing uh, with this, this formula sometime or other in here. Uh, but that's, So that's what we would have done with this particular formula. Now, if I don't know what I want to do, I could come up here and look, well, there's the addition. Uh, there's to the power of, uh, there's multiplication, there's my parentheses, delimiters, uh, there's a, a, a divided by, and, and so on down through here. So you can try, I, I, you know, I don't even know, I assume that's factorial, I, I, I don't know. Um, but I could say if something is less than something else, I, I, can, I can do these more complicated things, but we'll save that for a, a different video here to see if I forget what I need to do. If I forget that star, that asterisk is multiplication here, I can come in here and look. Likewise, how we define functions is here. Absolute value, uh, use cell number. We'll look at this in just a second. Uh, cosine, uh, there's an error function, uh, exponential. Uh, there's an inverse cosine, there's a natural logarithm, a logarithm, a square root. Uh, so you can see all of these random number generator. Um, I've used that a few times. I think I have that in another video doing something. So you can see some of the functions you can you can identify right here. Um, if you don't know what they are, statistics. Uh, I will look at this in a moment. I use pretty much all of these. Um, so C min would mean the minimum uh, that you have across there. C max is the maximum. C sum is the sum. Median mean. I don't ever remember. I often forget which ones need that C in front. So I come in here and look at that. Uh, so you've got other things uh, you can work on in here. Again, we'll we'll do an, another one with some of the more um, sophisticated things that you can do, some of the more complicated things that you can do out there. Um, but let's look at, uh, for example, F3. Uh, if I wanted to find the standard deviation of so so what this says is i want to find the standard deviation of rows 1 to 30 and this is telling me that i'm going to to write things i'm just going to like if i'm in the zeroth row here i'm, I'm going to write that in the zeroth row if i'm in the first row i'm going to write that in the first row and so on so i'm just i'm just moving across those rows and this for example uh this this particular window you're looking at here we have all of this data that's out here and uh, this is, our, this is the, the signal that we measured for each star uh, in summer of 2020 uh, with the four pixel aperture that we've been talking about. So for example, that sigma that I got right there in 61 was going to be um, the standard deviation. That's what that is, a standard deviation of all of these columns in here. And that's 52 is where it ends. And it starts at one. So I would do C1 to C52 to get uh, the, the mean value. If I wanted the median value, uh, I'm sorry, to get the standard deviation. Uh, if I, and I have the mean value written in, which would be mean. If I want the median, uh, what did we say? It was one to 52, I think it was. So let's go back here and do 52. And C60 is going to be the median value. Let's see if we, we did this. Uh, we come up here and say, I, th I think it's just median. Yep, it's just median. So we could have pulled down on that, but I often just type it in and say, because I've done this enough, I remember most of these things and say median value. There it is. There was the median signal value. Uh, we can compare that to the mean signal value on that night. If we wanted mean, we just type in mean here. Uh, what was the minimum value on that night uh, on that uh, for that star in that year? We can do C min is goes in here. And um, we want that to be C63. See, the 63 is right there. So we're going to do C63 in there and run that. And that's that's the minimum value and signal that each one of the stars had. We can, of course, do maximum value. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this now. Uh, oh, what? Yeah. I do that a lot. Uh, I wrote over the minimum data. I need to go to C64. Change this back to C max. Okay. And then suppose I want to look and see which stars really had a big variation between minimum and maximum. Then I'll pop in out here in some place and say uh, C65. 
is equal to C64 over C63. So C64 divided by C63, run that there, boom. Oh, we see, uh, there's, a, there's one. <laughs> that's one of our variable stars. That's an eclipsing binary uh, star. On the night that it's in, nights that it's in eclipse, it has a very low signal relative to the nights that it's not in eclipse. And you see that 60% brighter uh, maximum to minimum, and it pops right out. And we'll see some others down through there if we scroll. So this is a very crude way to identify stars we might be interested in. 285, that's a pulsating variable star. 280 is a pulsating variable star. Uh, 281 is a pulsating variable star. So we see uh, this star was 72% brighter, uh, you know, 1.723 times brighter uh, maximum than minimum. So this uh, interest, interesting stuff. So you can use all kinds of formulas. That's not what this is about here. Sorry, I'm getting sidetracked and thinking about looking at various stars from this year. Um, but you see that th this video is not about that. It's about things we can do with the formula entry window. Um, the number of nights uh, you saw here, I masked out the nights where the star wasn't present, or if we, we we didn't pass photometric quality tests, I masked out the entire row right here. And so um, we mask out all the zeros where we didn't detect that particular star. And so then I do number of nights is going to be NPTS. So if I come in here and just go back to the formula entry that I had, wherever that was here, um, NPTS, change that C max to NPTS. And it would be, I want to say C58 is equal to NPTS um, 1 to 52. And it tells me how many of the 52 nights that star was present in. Uh, so, uh, for example, we look down here and a star uh, was only present 11 nights. Uh, I wouldn't use that star in any of my studies to say we didn't have good enough data, enough data coverage for that. Uh, so, so that's the way you would think about doing something like that. And again, you can play around with these different functions that could go in there and try different things uh, that you want to. Uh, let's do one more thing, and then this video has probably gotten long enough, and we can we can add stuff into a, a, a later video. Uh, what I want to do here is in some place there. So one of the things I did here um, was to say, let's um, write in cell 3-0. So that's going to be row three in column zero. That's what the, that's the format here is to say cell three zero is equal to mean of columns seven to ten, rows two to two. Okay, so uh, rows two to two here. Uh, let's see. Let's just run it and see what happens. So we're going to run it. Boom! It wrote in there uh, three zero. It says the the mean of these numbers. Uh, that we found found out here was 38 and a half. Um, that doesn't look right to me. Oh, we're, where are we? Uh, 38 and a half. So let's try let's try playing around and see if we can figure out what's really going on here. Uh, so let's in fact let's mask out um, let's mask out the flux values. And let, so now that we've masked them out, we'll still use uh, mean 7 to 10, uh, but that should now be, remember we click off so we get the numbers back. It looks like it's just going to be 8 and 10 because we've masked out the other values. And let's run it again and see what happens. Uh, so nothing happened. So it tells us we don't quite have this figured out, uh, what we think is going on here. Um, so let's look and see. Uh, what's happening with their data set right here? Um, what we've actually done is we've taken the mean of 7 to 10 in column 2. So we've learned. We should have known that. I, I knew that. I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing. Uh, the mean uh, goes from 7 to 10, column 2 to 2. So we've taken that mean out. Let's now mask out uh, 8 and 9. And if we do that, function mask, uh, 30 and 46 should be what we're taking the mean of now. Um, and so that should change ever so slightly. And it did, uh, to 38, which is what we would have expected. So that said, column two, that's what this says. Column two uh, means seven to 10. Let's um, 
mask out those two. And to say now, <clears throat> let's see what happens if we make this one. It's, we've changed. So you see the format we have here, 7 colon 10. That's rows 7 to 10. There's the row numbers out here. And 1 colon 2, we think will be uh, columns 1 and 2. So now we should be getting the mean of 30, 21, 46, and 29. So this mean number should drop significantly from what we had there. Uh, and it did. Okay, so so we see that it dropped down to what we were doing. So we took the mean of everything that was in this rectangle right here, uh, but we masked out the middle part of this this rectangle. So uh, make sure you have your parentheses right. Make sure you open a, a an argument and you close an argument. And so that's where you're going to get um, it, you know you're going to get errors messages if you don't have the right number of right hand parentheses and left hand parentheses. And test your data to make sure you're getting the result out that you expect to get the result. But you can write things into columns. We saw here today using statistics. You can write things in to specific cells uh, using statistics like we did uh, right here. And so you can do all kinds of different stuff. Uh, for those of you in the Physics 182 class, I'll put the Collider Graph manual up on the KD site so you'll be able to see that and, and play around with some of the things that you can do. Uh, use this as a jumping off point as a way to start. So hopefully that's helpful for everybody. And we will probably do a little bit more with using formulas in the future. So take care, everyone. We'll have more for you later.